Welcome to your Barbados Today Evening News Update for Thursday, November 4. Prime Minister Mayor Motley today updated the nation on her meetings at COP26, expected to yield dividends for Barbados. Speaking from Brussels, she announced that government has secured a US$60 million US dollar loan from the European Investment Bank, which will go towards paying off the cost of retrofitting the Harrison Point isolation facility, among other things. And that loan has exceedingly generous terms because there's a five-year moratorium. In other words, we don't pay anything for the five years. Then it is a 20-year loan. So the first five years, you pay nothing. 15 years remaining, you pay. But we're paying at, I think it's 1.25% um, that, that the interest rate is. And anybody who knows anything, that is like the kind of rates we pay at the IMF, which is almost next skin to nothing compared to the 10 and 13% that we were paying um, when we were going to the markets under the last government because of how little confidence people had in our ability to manage our affairs. The St. Lucie-based coronavirus hospital is currently being expanded and the Prime Minister revealed that work on the tertiary building, which will have 48 beds with dedicated oxygen supply, has been completed. Government is still, however, awaiting the arrival of oxygen plants, but she assured patient care will not be compromised. Dr. Ford and his team have given us the assurance um, that they are in a position still to meet the needs and that tertiary building is now a kind of primary secondary. So we have the original primary that had 38 beds. We have the original secondary that we turned into a primary facility with dedicated oxygen and capacity. That was another 42, bed, 42 beds, you know, 42 beds. And now we have this new tertiary where the downstairs floor will have 48 beds with dedicated oxygen capacity again and upstairs will be a kind of new secondary with 56 beds that will not have the dedicated oxygen supply of downstairs but they will have at least 10 of the 56 beds with oxygen concentrators being used. Prime Minister Motley again appealed to Barbadians to get vaccinated while praising the fact that 65% of the eligible population had taken the vaccine, she said if at least 75 or 80% of the population takes the jab, then the curfew could be extended and other restrictions lifted. What we want to do first is to extend before lifting. And I think we are close to extending. In fact, I've had and received some, 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 some information and advice that we can't only look at the vaccinated people but we now have to also look at those who have antibodies because effectively it is both the vaccinated people and the persons who've had it with the antibodies that are more or less protected. Um, and it is against that backdrop that our first destination point would be to carry hopefully the curfew to 11 o'clock or midnight. I don't want to pronounce on it today, um, but I'm in the process of having a conversation. And conversations mean that you have to share. Um, after the point of 11 or midnight, I think when we reach closer to that ultimate threshold, whether that threshold is 75% or 80% of the eligible population, I'm waiting to find out, but that is when we would like to remove the restrictions completely. Barbados' fight against the COVID-19 pandemic got a major boost today. Acting Prime Minister Santia Bradshaw and Minister of Health and Wellness, Lieutenant Colonel Jeffrey Bostick this morning, received the second tranche of a gift of vaccines from the United States. The over 70,000 Pfizer vaccines were part of almost 600,000 doses shared with Antigua and Barbuda, the Bahamas, Belize and Jamaica over the past three days. United States Ambassador to Barbados and the Eastern Caribbean, who was at the Granley Adams International Airport this morning, said no other country in the world has provided Barbados with this level of assistance. She also stressed that vaccines are the fastest and more sure way to end the COVID-19 pandemic. In the latest COVID-19 update, the island recorded two deaths today and 336 new positive cases on Wednesday. A 61-year-old woman and a 71-year-old man passed away while in primary isolation at the Harrison's Point Isolation Facility. They were both unvaccinated. The death toll now stands at 169. The new cases consist of 156 males and 180 females. Of these, 74 individuals were under the age of 18 and the other 262 were 18 years and older. There were 869 persons in isolation facilities and 6,096 in home isolation. 
In other news this Thursday, water services are returning to normalcy for residents in parts of St. Andrew and St. Joseph, affected by a near two-week water outage triggered by the burst of a 10-inch main in Cattle Wash, St. Joseph. Today, the BWA's Director of Engineering, Charles Leslie, updated reporters at the scene. We are pleased to say that the transmission main now is completed. That was put back into service yesterday, so, so customers um, further down in St. Andrew and St. Joseph are getting back their water. And all we are doing now is um, awaiting the results of the distribution main, which just services the properties along the East Coast Road. Um, we are expecting that either back today or tomorrow. And once that, those results are good, those mains will be put into service. The BWA's acting general manager, Christopher Mapp, apologized to residents and thanked them for their patience. No, it could not have been easy. It was not easy on the customers. But I assure you that the BWA worked tirelessly in the relaying of this main to get service back up in as short a time as possible. And I just want to express gratitude for allowing us to carry out these works in that time. And my apologies once again. Get ready for NIFCA 2021, the virtual edition. Today, the National Cultural Foundation launched the event, the first national festival since the start of the COVID-19 pandemic. The NCF Chief Cultural Officer, Andrea Wells, says Barbadians can expect a cultural feast. In the performing arts, we're going to have two NIFCA lookbacks, both in music and theatre, where we're going to be interviewing some of our top award winners over the years at NIFCA. The Bajan Songbook will present 55 of our nation's favorite Barbadian songs, songs written, performed, or produced in Barbados in the last 55 years of our independence um, status as a nation. In theater, creative experimental event looking at improvisational theater, as well as spoken word. And that will be brought to you by the Theater Arts Desk. We are also featuring a dance on film tribute to a national dance icon, Jean Carson. In the visual arts, community bureaus, a virtual exhibition, and catalogs of artwork. There's regional and international news after this short break. Hi, I am Onika. I am a mother, I'm a daughter, and I'm a wine educator. When vaccines first came on the scene last year, I was really apprehensive about getting vaccinated. I was worried about taking a drug that I felt was experimental. So at first, I really wasn't about it. I decided to get vaccinated. I had to acknowledge the fact that I am asthmatic and my son is also asthmatic. I have a career in wine. We depend on our senses and I decided that I did not want to risk it for being afraid of taking a vaccine. Coronavirus has affected everyone around the globe. And keeping this in mind, make sure that your decision is not a selfish one and that you're thinking of the benefits of the whole. Let's roll up our sleeves and get back to living. To regional news, health authorities in Trinidad and Tobago are keeping a close eye on the growing number of pregnant women contracting COVID-19. In 2020, we had 58. For the first half of this year, we had 303 cases. And then we started to see a significant rise in the number of cases being reported for pregnant women in the database from July. In September, we had a, a high of 161 women entering our database. And for October, we have 100 cases. But the Ministry of Health does not believe the increase in cases among pregnant women is out of the ordinary at this time. These are patients who are getting infected in the community. This is not occurring in the hospital setting. These are persons just like the general population, are being exposed. According to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention in Atlanta, pregnant women have a 70% increased risk of death if they contract COVID-19. 823 women have contracted COVID in Trinidad and Tobago, of which 2-3% to 3 have ended up in our intensive care unit and high dependency units, and we've had two deaths of women who were delivered and succumbed after delivery from the effects of COVID-19. 
The ministry is urging all pregnant women to get vaccinated as soon as possible, including those who may have had one shot of the Sinopharm vaccine before becoming pregnant. On the international front, the World Health Organization warned today that the rising number of COVID-19 cases in Europe is of grave concern and the region could see another half million deaths by early next year. Sounding the alarm, the World Health Organization says new coronavirus cases are surging across Europe. COVID-19 cases are once again approaching record levels, with the more transmissible Delta variant continuing to dominate transmission across Europe and Central Asia. We are at another critical point of pandemic resurgence. Europe is back at the epicenter of the pandemic, where we were one year ago. According to the WHO, hospitalization rates across the European region have more than doubled over the past week. And the global health body is warning that if things remain the same, Europe could see another 500,000 COVID-related deaths by February 2022. In Germany, the EU's most populous country, over the past 24 hours, new cases have nearly passed 34,000, an all-time high since the pandemic started. Here in France, new COVID-19 infections hit 10,050 cases on Wednesday, the first time the tally has topped 10,000 since September 14th. Because of the spike, the government is reintroducing mask measures at schools in 39 departments. That's news, but for the very latest, visit our website at www.barbidastoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook. And sign up for our breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We're also on Izumi Media and Bus Terminals, as well as Screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. You can also hear us on Mix 96.9 FM and Capital Media HD 99.3 FM.